Hello. Let me know. Am I audible there? Yes, sir. Thank you. So I'm sharing my screen and we will resume the session. So give me a minute. Uh, let me know when screen reaches to you. Yes, screen is visible. Ah, yeah. Uh, so here we will have a look at a uh, star and uh, snowflakes schema. Okay. Uh, this is the star structure. And this is a snowflake, which a design naturally created in ice. OK, so that is a snowflake. Uh, so uh, uh, here uh, you observe. First of all, let me brief you about uh, uh, two types of tables, dimension table and uh, uh, fact tables. Dimension tables and fact tables. Dimension tables uh, uh, holds, uh, you know, lookup information. They hold lookup information. Lookup information, master information, which changes very slow. OK, it changes very slow. Examples can be list of departments, list of departments, list of projects. OK, it doesn't change very frequently. The transaction change very frequently. OK, but list of projects, you know, maybe new project we may receive once in two weeks or once in four weeks. The list of projects. Uh, companies working on list of products. List of products. All these are dimension tables. OK, and what are all fact tables? Fact tables. Every event, every transaction is recorded in fact table. It okay, changes very fast as every event and transactions are recorded here. They are recorded here. Uh, out of these two tables, you know, fact tables normally have a foreign key. OK, it normally has a foreign key. Foreign key towards Dimension tables, dimension tables. And then when one fact table refers to multiple dimension tables. Okay, let me just take you to the structure. Now, see this, this structure. This is a fact table which may be holding all transactions and in the inside of fact table here you may be having multiple uh, foreign keys. Either there is a foreign key constraint or there is no foreign key constraint. That is up to you. But these are representing keys which may be used to join to dimension table. So these are around five dimension tables around uh, this fact table. OK, so uh, the keys mentioned here can be called as a foreign key and those are primary keys in the dimension table. Whenever we run a query on this, in that query, we may create a joins. 
towards the dimension tables. Okay, and we procure information, you know, not only from this table, but the information joined into dimension table also. And using that information, we may generate different and different reports. So in this, this, this is looking like a star schema. That's why we call it as a star schema. And in this star schema, you observe uh, fact table is at the center and dimension tables are around uh, the fact table. You also observe that we have identified dimension tables by normalizing fact table. So fact table has been normalized to get a dimension tables. OK, but dimension tables are not referring to any other table. So again, I bring to your notice very important point that dimension tables are normal, are not normalized. Fact table is the only table here which is normalized and dimension tables are not normalized. Or even if they are normalized by doing a denormalization, we bring into the, this kind of structure. OK, so that dimension table need not have to exercise any join towards any other table. But what is the benefit of this structure? That this structure makes it really simple with one fact table and n number of dimension tables around it. The select query on the fact table, you know, is not that kind of complex. It will be a simple. So one benefit of going with a star schema is that queries are simple because there are fewer joins. Fact table only holds the joins to the dimension tables, and dimension tables do not have joins further. So fact table only holds the joins, and that's why queries are simple. But there is one cost we have to pay against a simple query. And that cost is as dimension tables are not normalized, there may be a kind of redundancy of the data because they are not normalized. So there may be a kind of a redundancy of the data. OK, and you may have to bear the brunt of you know, data consistency because whenever there comes a redundancy of the data, you know, data may become inconsistent. So here, this particular type of schema attracts extra measures to be taken uh, to maintain data consistency. Because by default, otherwise, if you don't take extra measure, it is highly likely that your data may become inconsistent. So at one side, star schema is simple to implement. At one side, star schema is simple to query. But at another side, at what cost? That you need extra measures to uh, uh, we need extra, you need extra measure to uh, deal with a data inconsistent inconsistency that may be brought because of the data redundancy. That extra measure you need to take here. Okay, so that's how, you know, a dimension tables and fact tables can be uh, used to plot a star schema like structure. Star schema like structure. Okay. Uh, simple queries, simple structure and queries. That is one benefit. OK, uh, uh, but it brings the data redundancy. Redundancy it brings uh, data inconsistency. Inconsistency. Okay, which have to be addressed. Okay, with extra measures, measures. Okay, if data redundancy is very small, okay, then these measures also you have to keep small. But if data redundancy is large, then serious extra measures are essential or don't go with star schema, then go with snowflake schema. Snowflake schema. In star schema, Okay, you have foreign keys. In star schema, you have foreign keys within the fact table and uh, dimension table. Uh, sorry, fact table will establish joints with the dimension tables. This is snowflake schema. In snowflake schema, you normalize everything. Thereby, you keep your redundancy least and data consistency as much higher as you can. Okay, so here, not only joints are exercised between fact and dimension tables, 
बट डायमेंशन टेबल्स एंड अदर डायमेंशन टेबल्स और अदर टेबल्स ऑल्सो तो डायमेंशन टू डायमेंशन रिलेशनशिप ऑल्सो कैन बी एस्टेब्लिश देर बाय यू नो स्नोफ्लेक्स गिमा बिकम्स कॉम्प्लेक्स क्वेरीज आर ऑल्सो कॉम्प्लेक्स ओके बट एट वॉट बेनिफिट डेटा रिडेंडेंसी इज लिस्ट सो हियर आई मेन्शन complex structure and queries okay normalization all over the structure normalization all over the structure hmm. redundancy is minimum redundancy minimum and so consistency data consistency data consistency is highest data consistency is highest okay so here you apply full normalization but if you are applying full normalization and you want to come back to star schema what you have to do on all dimension tables you will apply denormalization thereby you convert your snowflake schema to star schema okay now uh, let us understand uh, different sharding methods and after that we will do some hands on okay so here are different sharding methods okay let me explain you about the sharding methods okay first of all sharding methods for large size tables so here let me teach charding <coughs> for large size data tables okay so here fact tables are transactional table and they normally are of the large size fact tables okay, are transactional okay with large size now whenever we are talking about a large size you know queries should be executed faster there so what do we expect to run the queries faster okay indexing that is the first thing second whenever your tables are really large you do expect partitioning 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 okay and whenever you want to run the queries faster here your joins should exert should exercise with a performance joins with high performance these three are the necessities here whenever you want to work with a large size tables okay and these three things you all these three things you get when you go with a hash sharding hash sharding in hash sharding for partitioning you must mention column name partition column must be mentioned here okay so now just have a look at this slide Fact tables or large dimension tables use hash sharding. Indexing gives the highest query performance on joins and aggregation, even on large tables. While creating a table, one to be declare sorry, you have to declare a partition key. Huh? Partition key is must here. Okay, so just observe create table. Here you will mention table name. Just observe uh, syntax quickly. Thereafter you will mention all column names. After that with distribution is equal to hash and here you have to mention the partition key name here you have to mention the partition key name what is clustered column store index remember here these large tables are to be used not for not only for querying but these are also to be used for analytics so whenever these tables are created you know down the line inside the distribution you know partitioning has to be done okay and indexing when we talk about indexing you know whenever we want values from a specific column you know here we are not expecting values from specific row we are expecting values from specific column so the index should not take us quickly to the row but it should take us quickly to the column so it's not 
clustered index we are expecting. Here we are expecting clustered column store index. Cluster index helps you to reach to the row, a specific row quickly. And clustered column store index helps you to reach to a specific column quickly. So fact tables basically are of large size. And their complete designing has been to you know, uh, access the data for the query quickly from the distributed uh, uh, distributed storage. OK, and this is how uh, you know, syntax of table creation is. OK, so hash sharding is basically for fact tables. You can partition the column. OK, and here name of the part partition you must mention. Okay, so you must mention the partition column name. So that is about sharding of large uh, data tables. Huh. Now let us see sharding for small lookup tables. Sharding for small lookup tables. Lookup tables. What? Why they are needed? They are needed basically for holding dimension data. Dimension data, uh, we already have seen here dimension table. They hold lookup information. So it is for our dimension table. For dimension table. These tables change very slow. Slowly changing. Slowly changing. Uh, yes, fact tables change very fast. New records keep coming there, and earlier records either may be deleted or may be updated. Okay, but uh, mm, dimension tables change slowly. Okay, you need indexing also. Okay, indexing also is needed. Okay, but here you don't need partitioning because a table has to be existing in one partition only because they are small. Very large tables are to be distributed across multiple nodes, but small tables ideally to go into a single partition. So that's why no partitioning. No partitioning. Now, there is always a join relationship in between fact tables and dimension tables. So to exercise joins quickly with every partition, with every partition, okay, these tables, these tables are replicated, replicated across all nodes. So they are exactly replicated. Their multiple copies are created. OK, and thereby, let me explain this through uh, diagram. OK, now see there are three nodes. So here is a node one, here is a node two, and here is a node three. OK, fact table is of say 9 TB. I am considering fact table is of 9 TB, out of which 3 TB data will be stored here. 3 TB will be stored here. And remaining 3 TB will be stored here. So fact tables are distributed. 3 TB. And from the fact table, then it has to create a join with a dimension table. So for that purpose, then what it does, I am drawing a, a dimension table in the red color here. Here. And So this 3 db data is joined with dimension table. OK, and the content of the dimension table here are also replicated here. So this db data get joined with this dimension. Achha, we can afford this dimension, sorry, replication only because dimension tables are small in size. And this db data will be joined here. So joining works really fast because the data which is being joined and the data to which is you know, it is uh, exercising the join. Both of them are in the uh, in the single node, and that's why join works really fast here. For this joining, it has to have indexing. So indexing of dimension table is already there, okay? But it's not partitioning; it's the data replication. Okay, so data is. Let me change the color. Data is replicated. That is very important. Data is 
replicated. Data is replicated. Fine. So that's how you know it is working. Okay, and this combination, factable as a uh, hash table, and dimension table as a replication table. You know this combination really works in joints. So see here, uh, see here, dimension tables and lookup tables. Create table table name with clustered column store index. Distribution is equal to replicate. So it's not partitioning. That's why partition key we don't mention. But distribution is replicate. So this combination works really fast in, uh, while running the queries. Now the third problem. OK, so here we have identified a table for large data size, table for small data size. Now the third problem. Whenever this large data size tables are to be uploaded. OK, we have to have quick uploading mechanism. Sharding for quick uploading data, large data, large data, huh, large data. For that purpose, you have to have a staging environment. Need a staging environment. Why do we need it? Because whenever this big data, we try to upload to the fact table directly. You know, it is going to take a longer time because it has to spend some time in, in identifying the partition that specific record to go. So for every record, it has to identify the partition, and that takes a longer time. In case if there are billions of records, and for billions of records, billion times it will have to search for the uh, partition that record has to go, you know, it takes a longer time. That's why uploading data directly to the uh, fact table is avoided. There you have a staging environment, and there you use round robin sharding. Round robin sharding. Okay, in round robin sharding, you know it is just only for uploading. Okay, so here from uh, sorry big data, big data. First of all, you upload to round robin table, round robin uh, table, and from round robin table, then you upload it to uh, hash sharding. Hash shard. Shard table. So this is two step process, but this two step process takes a less time. If you compare to single step process. OK, and this is a very efficient way to do uploading of the big data. And for that purpose, we use round robin. Just a minute. OK. So how do you create a round robin table? So temporary or staging table, there is no. Uh, say uh, partitioning key here. And it is not suitable for joining also. It is just suitable for staging. OK, how do you create it? Table name, all the columns which you want to upload with clustered column store index. Distribution is equal to round robin. So no partitioning. Key. In this case, what happens that first record will definitely go into the first without you know referring to the partition. Key. Second record goes into the second node, third record goes into the third node, fourth record goes into the first node again. Fifth record goes into the second node. So it doesn't decide with partition the record to go. In the round robin fashion only, it uploads the data. And once whole data is uploaded, okay, after that, you, know, you can use insert, insert select. Okay, insert all these records into hash table by collecting data from the select query on round robin. So select query will be on round robin, robin, and insert query will be on Hash table. Hash table. 
OK, so that's how you will upload the records. So that is about a third type of sharding. Now let us do some hands on. OK, so for that purpose, uh, you know, uh, I already have created Synapse Analytics. I will create a date, uh, uh, dedicated SQL pool over there, and then we will try to create some of the tables. We will try to, you know, bulk upload the data into those tables, and finally then we will see how star schema query we can run. So for that purpose, I have to go to. Where is. OK. So now I'm going to. Uh, synapse. Actually, sure here it is. I am already in Synapse. OK, now I want to create a dedicated SQL pool. There are two places from where we can create a dedicated SQL pool. From the portal also, I can create a dedicated SQL pool. Or inside a manager section, from here also, SQL pool, I can create a dedicated SQL. So when I'm clicking on plus new, OK, here it will ask me all the details for creating a dedicated SQL pool. So maybe oh, the details. I'll, I'll send that file. Sorry. Sorry. You're on unmute. You have any query? Asking me name of the pool. So I may be giving Chandra dedicated. OK, and here. Data warehouse unit is a uh, you know unit for choosing the number of uh, uh, CPUs, number of uh, size of the RAM and the read write speed for doing the number of transactions per second. OK, so I go with minimum. So maybe 100 C or I select 200 C. Because I want one sample data there. So I'm selecting 200 C. OK, I'm going to additional city. Where? Data source use existing data. Backup restore point. OK, I am not able to select sample data from here. No problem. OK, clicking on review plus create. Validation is successful and then I'm clicking on clicking on create. And it will create an infrastructure there. Data warehouse infrastructure necessary for data warehouse units 200. So here it is creating dedicated SQL pool. Okay, for a dedicated SQL pool, if I click here, cancel. Okay. So its a name will start appearing here also. Huh? Let's scroll down. Here it, its a name will start appearing once it is created. Okay, so there you can see list of all pools will start appearing here. Okay, so let it be created in the meantime. Okay, I already have explained to you uh, what is the star schema. Now let me show you. Mm, just a minute. I will show you how what kind of queries, create table queries we will run here. And those queries then we will try to put to run. OK, so I will create a script uh, here after. OK, and see, create table. Fact reseller set. This is the fact table. In the examination, there are questions on this also that they may give you some real life example and you they may ask you uh, what what kind of table to be created for what scenario so scenario one may be you know uh, slowly changing data to be uh, which is which will be used for lookup purpose okay uh, we have to select a sharding pattern for that kind of data 
then the data which is getting frequently updated, what will be the sharding pattern? OK, and then the data which uh, uh, then the table we want uh, to be used to upload the very big data size into the pack table. OK, what kind of sharding pattern to use? That type of queries are asked in the examination. OK, besides that. Here you observe different column names are appearing and this is the list of the you know in the fact table there will be the list of the foreign keys which we can use to connect to uh, connect through the joins to dimension tables with distribution hash and here is partition key name okay here is the partition key now for creating the partitions or for selecting the key to be a partition key what are all different criteria Okay, so for that purpose, let me share one link. Okay, you please refer to that link. Okay, to know more on partitioning. Okay, so here is a link. Normally, the columns which are frequently being used across the queries in uh, joins and group by, you know, those columns are normally preferred for partitioning. Here it is. So refer to this link for to know more of, on the partitioning. OK, let me just check. Is it ready now? It is still deploying. Let me just refresh it from here. OK, it is still deploying. OK, let us wait for a while. So fine, so observe how with clause has been written. The hash, because this is fact table, and here is a partitioning key, clustered column store index. OK. How do we create a dimension table? Just observe. Dimension tables are to be created for the uh, with a sharding pattern replicate. OK, so table name. OK, reseller key. Now reseller key is like a primary key in this table. OK, and if you go here, reseller key is a will be used as a foreign key in the fact table. OK, so reseller key and other columns have been mentioned and distribution replicate. Observe no partitioning key is mentioned. OK, so this is the way you create a dimension table on the same line with a similar syntax change in the column names uh, and the table names. We may be creating other dimension tables. OK, and here is a way to upload the data to the dimension tables. So copy into dimension table from. And here is a URL of the data existing in the public domain. OK, other URLs you may mention. OK, and uh, you may mention the format and other things. And what you are doing here, you are uploading the data. Uh, into the dimension table. Here you are uploading the data into the dimension table. So that is a bulk copy kind of thing. OK, and here you are uploading the data. OK, into or from this public domain file into fact table. And then finally, OK, this query we will run. And in this query, OK, I think dedicated SQL pool must be ready by this time. Yes, it is ready. OK, so now what I do, I go to the data section and I create one script file here. OK, so I go to the data section. And I refresh it here. Closing all these things, I refresh it here so that it will show me the database name. The workspace it should have shown me that database name. Chandra dedicated SQL, that database name is actually here. Yes. Chandra dedicated SQL. And on that Chandra dedicated SQL, let me write a new empty uh, script. From here, I am asking it to write a script. I did have these scripts uh, created earlier. Okay, let me name this script as 050. 050. Underscore. 
Star. Fine. Let me run those scripts one by one. Okay, and uh, populate them with the data. So first of all, I am creating a pack table. So here is a code to create a pack table. Its syntax I already have explained to you. Okay, I am putting it to run, and then it has to create pack table. And yes, it has created the fact. Fact table has been created. Let me upload the data to the fact table. For that purpose, searching for the copy command. Here it is. Copy into table name from URL from where it will get the data. File type CSV, file terminator, vertical bar, file quote, uh, single quote. Okay, row terminator encoding. Those things I have mentioned. And let me. Now in this name, it is uh, picking up some invisible name. Let me remove that. Let me put this query to run. And now it will show me the data populated to it. No, I will have to run a select query. Select star from. TBO table name to check whether the data is really populated there. And here it has to bring the data. And yes, it has brought the data. OK, so one table I have created and that table has also been populated with the data. So I'm canceling it because it is still bringing the data. Okay, so I'm canceling it, but that file does have very large data size. That's why it is taking a longer time to bring the data. Right. Let us create one dimension table now. Okay. So now here, let me create two dimension tables. Team reseller. This fact table. This is dimension. Team reseller. Okay, and yes, I am putting it to run. Before that, let me just check. Has it taken table name correctly? Yes, it has taken. Okay, and let me search uh, the copy command for that. Oh, I think. Okay, that table has been created. Let me run a copy uh, command there for reseller. Here it is. So it is being copied from diesel, uh, dim reseller CSV. I'm putting it to run, so thereby it will populate uh, data into dim reseller select star from your dim reseller and here is the data okay it has brought from oh just a minute huh? uh, see it hasn't got the data because i forgot to you know do correction here so it hasn't shown me error that it hasn't got that file from where it has to bring the data. OK, so now I have done, uh, done a correction over there. I'm running the copy command. Now it has to populate the data. OK, and running select. Yes, now it has populated the data. So this is one dimension table we have made ready. Huh. Now, second dimension table. So dim reseller has been done. Dim employee now. So here it is. Employee. OK, observe. Clustered index or clustered column store index 
cluster index is for row wise, cluster column store is for column wise. Okay, so this particular table, okay, I want to create here. So I'm running create query. Table has been created. Let me populate it with a copy command. So for employee, here it is. And again, I will have to change the file name. As I am picking this text from the Word file, that's why that uh, invisible character is appearing there. Okay, yes, it has populated it. Select star from. Same employee. And let us see whether it has populated with the data. And yes, it has also been populated. This is second dimension table we have created. Now let us create a third dimension table. Okay, I want to create all the dimension tables to run that uh, star schema query properly. So here I created a fact table team. Reseller deem employee. Now I am creating deem product. Deem product. Yeah. Deem product table is created. Let me populate it with the data. Deem geography is yet to be created. Here is the deem product. Again, invisible character here. Yes, that table has also been populated. Select star from. Let me just check whether data is populated there. And yes, data is populated. So, dim product table is also ready. Okay, last table now, dim geography. So I have given a command to run uh, to create a dim geography and let me populate it with copy command. Again. Okay, that data also been copy, copied. Select star from semicolon. And see, all the tables, necessary tables have been created. One fact table and four dimension tables I have created here. Okay, and uh, for every table, if in the fact table, there are foreign keys, and for every dimension table, okay, the primary key of the dimension table has been a foreign key in the fact table. Now, just observe this select query. Here, we are doing a joining from fact table to dimension on the column, okay, geography, product on multiple columns, uh, sorry, on multiple tables, we are doing. Uh, we are creating a select query and this select query will bring the data uh, from the tables like uh, 
the star scheme. Okay. So this query I am putting to run. It will exercise necessary joints and you know respective joints have already been mentioned here, inner join and respective joints have already been mentioned there. So I'm putting it to run and now it has to bring the data for it. So the joinings we are exercising in uh, select query and here is the data we are getting. It is still running the query and yes, full data it has drawn. So this is the way how do we implement a star scheme. Necessary fact tables we created, necessary dimension tables we created and you know, in that uh, then we created a select query on the using star, star schema on the fact table and fact tables are doing a joining over the dimension. Any question on this slide? Have I made this point to understand? Have you understood it? What happens when fact dimension table is a changed in block CSV? No, I haven't got the question. Uh, Dev Jenny. Uh, will you please elaborate this question a little bit more? These tables are existing in data warehouse. And in data warehouse, we are doing joinings. Whenever these tables are not in the table form, but they are in the external table form, at that time, things are different. Okay, but uh, we, we just created fact and dimension table from the CSV files which are there in blob, right? No. See here, we are ingesting data from those blob uh, formats and we are uploading tables into database. So here, whenever we create this fact table and have uh, uh, dimension table, actual data is existing in dedicated SQL pool. It is not a case like we did on the serverless SQL pool. In serverless SQL pool, we created external tables, but these are not ex external tables. These are managed tables where data and schema both exist in database. These are managed tables. So what is the difference between this SQL pool and the SQL database we can create in cloud? Just a minute, huh? just a minute. Uh, sorry, will you please come up with your question again? Yes, uh, so th this is the uh, dedicated SQL pool we are creating inside Synapse. And what is the uh -huh. difference between this SQL pool database uh, and the Azure SQL database? This, this pool is a data warehouse. And SQL database is a database only. So you want to know the difference in between Azure Data Warehouse and Azure SQL Database, is it? Yes, yes. Achha, achha. Okay, just a minute. Where is my paint? Where did I? Here it is. Uh, 
एस एम पी एंड एम पी पी मैसिव पैरल प्रोसेसिंग ओके एंड एस एम पी सिमेट्रिक वॉट इज एस एम पी एस एम सिमेट्रिक there was one slide here which i wanted to show to you i think i have missed that slide somewhere that slide is here only now i am not getting it smp symmetric multi processing i think before we went for the lunch break i did see that slide okay where where it is huh? uh see your database structure uh, can be elaborated through smp okay now architecturally speaking you know how their executions are different let me tell you okay this is one machine this is another machine okay these are servers i am talking about and these servers do have replication of the database okay so here is the first server s1 here is the second server s2 and here is the third server s3 database has been replicated here s3 so what will be the data in s1 not the same data is existing in s2 and same data is existing in s3 whenever you receive the or you submit a query a load balancer will dispatch that query to a specific server here depending on whatever be the workload on that server least is the workload more probably that server is given the query to execute okay another query in round robin fashion may be given to this and the third query again in round robin fashion may be given to this by this time if s1 completes uh, execution of the very first query the fourth query would be given to s1 so thereby what happens that whenever many queries are coming to uh, the servers okay these queries are uniformly distributed across these uh, nodes and these nodes then uh, return the result of the query this is called as a smp now what is mpp in mpp things are different so let me draw three nodes here mpp means data warehouse how it is executed let me tell you whenever you submit one query to run in that case what happens is this is called as a control node this is control node control node and these are all worker nodes worker nodes worker 1 worker 2 worker 3 these are all worker nodes okay so now here you observe that whenever you submit one query to the control node remember here control node is expected to receive complex queries so when that complex query is received here it will be interpreted and that query is at a time given to not only one node but to all three nodes in smp that query is given to one node for the execution but here that query is being given to all the three nodes at the same time and here we are talking about very large data size where data has been partitioned so one partition of the data is existing here another partition is existing here and a third partition is existing here so remember that query gets executed on this partition same query gets executed on this partition the same query gets executed on this partition so query is same 
At the same time, it is being executed on three worker nodes, but on different data chunks. The query is complex. But to speed up execution of this query, you know, here we are we're making it to work on the distributed data. And why distributed data? Because data size is very large. Data cannot be accommodated in single machine, and that's why we have partitioned the data. So this is for big data size. It is for big data size. It is for very large data size. It is for very large data size or complex queries. These are a couple of uh, you know, major differences in between data warehouse and uh, database. Have I made this point clear? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. So as this is distributed, your table architecture changes, then your sharding patterns come, you know, and late other things, you know, uh, are different here than SQL database. But SQL database basically is for limited size of number of queries being executed per time unit. And for limited complexity of the queries. OK, and data warehouse is for large uh, data size and for unlimited complexities in the queries. Anybody else want to put any more, uh, want to add any more point here? You are welcome. Sir. Anybody else? I actually have a different question. Uh, not related to this, but uh, I just wanted to understand uh, like uh, in the uh, sample that we did, uh, we just uh, loaded the data. Uh, uh, can we also look at the scenario like how exactly you know, we are using the staging, uh, how exactly we are staging the data? Now, see, whenever we want to upload the data, very large data, there, whenever you run the insert query on this uh, hash table, OK, so your insert query brings one record at a time. Now here is this control right. node has to identify from the partitioning key. It has to identify, you know, which uh, uh, partition that record has to go. So part is a hash algorithm. It has to apply and accordingly, you know, it, in case if it is a region uh, as a partition key. OK, so data of all the regions will go together in one. Way. Data of all other region will go here into the another node. So that the, that's the way okay. it will have to distribute the data. OK, so are you saying the system is going to do the staging automatically at the back end? It would not be visible to. No, 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 no. I'm trying to make out the uh, need of the staging here. No, I understand the need of the staging. What I was trying to understand was how exactly that is done as an uh, I'm not clear about like if we have to run specific achha, achha. queries or okay. uh, yeah, uh, what is the process? How we do the staging? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is say round robin table. Round robin table. OK, instead of doing an insert on this kind of cluster, what is recommended that you will do insert on the round robin table? Uploading of the data into hash table takes a longer time than uploading it into round robin table. OK, so that is the step one. Step one, insert into round robin. Insert into round robin table. Ah, see, round robin. That is the first step. OK, and then you have the, uh, here hash table. OK, here is a hash table. OK, so here I am drawing hash table. In hash table, there are multiple uh, partitions. Now from here, from the round robin, how you will upload the data to the hash table? That is, I believe, is your question. OK, so here we will do insert. Insert into. Hash. OK, select star from. Round robin. That kind of query. 
we will may, uh, mention here. Now I'm whatever I have written it just for your reference, just to give you understanding. Okay, do right. go on the syntax. Yep, understood. Uh -huh. Okay, but this is two step process which runs faster than one step process. Directly doing insertion into hash table. So ideally both the things would be done in the same database, right? So we won't be having a separate staging environment or a staging database or anything database else. Database will right? be same. Could, you are absolutely uh, right. Database will be same, but you have to do it explicitly. I mean to say you have to create a round robin right. table, uh, explicitly upload data to round robin table, and then explicitly upload data to the hash table. All these tables will be in the same database, but explicitly you have to do uh, follow these steps and then do we also need to drop the round robin table manually yes yes it doesn't get dropped automatically when you don't need it because now here you know your data will be replicated one uh, replica is in round robin table and another replica is in a hash table so now if you don't need a round robin table uh, with the data that it is uh, uh, replicating, then drop it. Otherwise, it will consume, you know, double space, na? is it not? Right. And in case if you have very small quantity of data, like uh, incremental data, if you want to upload every day, which is not in big size, that data you can directly upload to hash table. You can write insert query on the hash table also, but that approach is uh, you know, recommended only when you have a small size of data, incremental data to be uploaded every day. Have I made this point clear? Uh, yes, sir. OK, so here I have explained you different sharding patterns and I explained you how do we work with a, a snowflake schema. Uh, sorry, a star schema. OK, uh, slowly changing dimension concept. I'm leaving up to you to explore. This concept is again important with respect to examination, but uh, because of paucity of the time, I'm finding it difficult to cover uh, right now. OK, I directly jump to Codeless uh, data pipeline. Okay, so for that purpose, uh, how uh, do we create a data pipeline? So that's what I would like to uh, show to you. So here, I already created a dedicated SQL pool. Dedicated SQL pool cost me much per hour. You know, it is costing me 200 and uh, some Indian rupees. Uh, so in case if I have done with it, it's uh, good for me to drop it. OK, so for that purpose, I go here. It is a dedicated SQL pool and here are the options. You know to delete it. I can pause it also. Pausing also, you know, uh, cost me less. But if I delete it, OK, if I don't need it, I will delete it. So I am deleting it as of. Asking me name of the pool, the so Chandra dedicated. Delete. But I have just few questions for you. You know, last one hour is remaining. OK, uh, shall I go with some sample questions or do you want me to uh, cover uh, creating a data pipeline? Do Within half an hour, I can. Yes, multiprocessing and massively parallel processing. Yes, Aman. Symmetric multiprocessing and massive parallel processing. Your database may work on SMP uh, design. Data warehouse works on MPP design. So I'm repeating my question again. Do I take you to sample questions or do you want me to uh, briefly cover uh, data pipeline? 
my recommendation is to have a look at some sample questions in remaining time. Very difficult to cover, you know, all the important points within uh, four hours of time. OK, that's why my recommendation is to go with sample questions. But I am asking you now. You please go ahead with your suggestion. Amul wants me to go with the sample questions. Who did want me to show uh, hands on on? Uh, uh, hands on on uh, data pipeline. Yeah, that was me, Parag. Uh, Achha, I Parag. asked for that actually. Uh, 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 uh. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. If everyone else wants to go with uh, sample questions, that's fine. Yes, and I'm still sorry, Parag. I try to cover important points, but um, uh, you no know, problem uh, at all. Uh, giving justice to every important point uh, for all of you. You know, and thereby managing uh, you know, time also, you know, sometimes becomes not possible. Right. Sure. So sure. I'm going with the recommendation now, and I am taking you to a couple of uh, sample questions. We already have gone through these initial slides, so I'm just fast forwarding. Read this question and try to answer it. I know you might not have studied uh, this curriculum. OK, so but in case if you kind of cannot answer it, you know, try to understand the things. You are creating a new notebook in Azure Databricks that will support R as a primary language, but will also support Scala and SQL. OK, which is which? Should you use to switch between languages? I already told you in one program, you can have one first command written in Python and second command written in Scala. Third command written in R language. It is possible. But then how do you ask to the Spark engine? You know uh, of which language it should understand that command. Should it understand that command of the Python or of the Scala or of the R language? So there comes something called as the magic command okay with what character that magic command begins because that magic command intimates to the spark engine of which language you should understand that command uh, is can anybody answer this the correct answer is percentage uh, is percent yeah yes yes so percentage spark means command is of scala Percentage Python means command is of uh, PySpark. Percentage R command is of R language. Percentage SQL command is of SQL. So correct answer is percentage. In some of the uh, tools, you know, double percentage uh, is to be given. OK, but in most of the tools, it is percentage only. So answer is correct. Second question. Now this question is based on uh, you know slowly changing dimension. That point I did not cover, but in case if somebody of us are aware, they can answer this question. And slowly changing dimension is also equally important. So I could not cover it because of paucity of time, you know. But I know its importance, and I tried hard, you know, to uh, cover that point. You are creating dimension for a data warehouse in Azure Synapse and this dedicated SQL pool. OK, you create a table using transact SQL statement showing in the exhibit. So from the table name. You understand this is dimension table. OK, dimension tables are slowly changing tables. OK, now there are type 1, type 2, type 3 and type 6 different ways to you know, uh, update these tables, slowly changing tables. Type 1, type 2, type 3, and type 6. Out of them, from the column names, you have to identify what kind of type it is. So in type 1, uh, you mention insert date and update date. In type 2, you don't mention that. 
okay in type 1 you mention insert date and update date so looking at these two columns i can see this is type 1 because in type 1 there are columns like start date and end date here also you can see start date and end date columns start date and end date but these are not for you know uh, validity of the version these are for sale start date and sale end date these are not for you know version start or version end okay these are for row start and row update so these are for type 1 type 1 has the presence of row insert and row update columns here in case of uh, type 1 there is no surrogate key there is only a business key so product key is a business key so business key has on type 1 surrogate key comes in type 2 and a type 6 business key comes in type 1 and type 3 type 1 and type 3 has business keys and type 2 and type 6 will have surrogate keys there is a logic behind that okay but that logic you will have to explore more next question in this question which table distribution will minimize query time so here it is asking me which column should it select as a partition key i already have shared one url with you if you work more on that url and uh, visit those pages and uh, study more on that you will get enough idea which column to select here as a partition key so the documentation mentions try to avoid the key used in a where clause try to avoid the column as a partition key that column which is used in the where clause so that's why date key we are not selecting because it is being used in a where clause that is the first thing okay second thing see from the table name you realize that this is a fact table so its implementation will be hash uh, hash sharding okay so hash distributed hash distributed there are two options you will not select this one purchase order id you will select purchase key now why purchase key why not purchase order id purchase order id what it is see here purchase order id it is nullable and normally for partitioning the column with a nullable is not selected that's why this column i am avoiding it is nullable so for partitioning we will not use this column i have only one choice here and it is b to select purchase key has distributed purchase key so whatever be the moc uh, uh, shared with you you know in that moc all these points have mentioned okay but this partitioning key wala point i haven't seen there so i have shared with you separate url on that next now this is not a question on data warehouse this is a question on normal database read the question carefully okay and try to answer it i repeat again this is normal database question uh, normal database knowledge okay is enough for answering this question read this question carefully you need to alter the table to meet following requirements they are asking you to alter the table so alter the table means either you uh, you want to change the column name or you want to add the new column there so basically this question on adding the new column which column should you add to the table that is the question okay, so you want to add a new column okay now see the criteria ensure that users can identify the current manager of employee for every employee we want to identify who is another employee who is the manager for this employee support creating an employee reporting hierarchy so owner of the company below that who all are they 
you know, owner of the company, the director, who all are all deputy director working under director, who all are the you know, supervisors working under director or managers working under. So that kind of hierarchy we should get through uh, the alteration that we will do. Provide fast lookup for manager's attributes such as name and job title. Okay, so looking at these four options, you know, which option do you select? And again, let me give you a hint. This is on self join. Self join. Joining within the same table. In case if your answer is wrong, what difference it will make? Why do why are you hesitating to answer? Just answer it now. Am I audible there? Do you hear me? Acha, you yes, are answering sir. already. Okay, just a minute. Let me check. Answer. Somebody is answering B. Somebody is answering A. Answer C is correct. Just a minute. Employee key, manager employee key, INT. INT. None. Answer C is correct. And now let me tell you the reason. You want to insert here a new column which will represent ID or identity key of the manager. No, manager is also an employee. So which key will be identity key here? Employee key. Another new column will refer to employee key Okay, for the manager. So the type of the new column will be exactly same to the type of the primary key here. So manager employee key with a type INT, that will be the great and nearest choice. Answer C is correct here. Have I made this point clear to understand everybody? Yes, yes. Huh. OK, so it is on self join. If you, you know, just explore more on the self join, you will be able to answer that uh, query. One last question let me cover. OK, as we are running out of time. OK, manage employee key. That is the answer. Huh. One last question. Read this question carefully and tell me. What answer comes to your mind? Answer is very simple to this question. Sometimes, you know, question seems to be difficult. Sometimes you realize, oh, no, you haven't worked on Spark. How can you answer the question? But just carefully go through the question. You know, in the question itself, there is an answer. And even if you haven't done anything on the uh, Spark, still you can answer this question.
read the select query carefully and while reading the select query if something strikes to you that most probably is the answer b a A says 24, B says an error. A, B. Now let me disclose the answer. Correct answer is B. Why? It is an error. Where name is equal to some name. What is this name? There is no there is nothing like name here. Employee name is a column. Employee ID is a column. But employee name is a column. Okay, and here whenever you are mentioning name, it is definitely wrong. Employee name had had they written employee name, the answer would have been 24. But whenever they are writing name, you know, that is a missing column. And that's why it is wrong. I have covered a couple of uh, questions here as a sample questions. OK, uh, last few minutes I want to dedicate, dedicate for question answer session. Or if you don't have question answers, I would like to you know, pull in uh, Chaitali. OK, for uh, remaining things, uh, whatever the left over from her side to cover. Go ahead with your question answers. Just few points I repeat again. That they have extremely simplified this examination. OK, so in case if you have slightest doubt. In your mind whether to go for the examination, I will always vouch for going for the examination, but it doesn't mean you will go for the examination without a preparation because you are spending a money. OK, so my recommendation will be carefully go through a MOC. OK, and uh, try to go, go through hands on also. I am sharing one link with all of you. OK, just uh, follow that link and go through all the hands on. Okay, so GitHub. TP 03. This link I am sharing. OK. In this link, there are uh, step by step explanation how to do uh, hands on. OK, please follow those steps. And OK, after you, you know, uh, get a confidence that you can go for the examination. I am pretty sure you will successfully. Complete the examination. So I don't see anybody has any question. Or even if you have a questions, you know, I will rec recommend uh, request you to post those questions to Chaitali. OK, and uh, Chaitali, will you please direct those questions to me? Yeah, sure. Sir. OK, Chaitali, over to you. Niyas has uh, to say something. Niyas, your audio is not reaching to us. Uh, sir, are you covering uh, from the basics of the data engineering? This is one short four hours uh, session, almost a four or five hour session. But in my regular session, which is mean for three to four days, I cover every point in details. OK, OK, sir. Yes, yes. Over to you, Jaitali. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Thanks to all the participants for joining in. Uh, before leaving, please do share your feedback on the feedback form. The link has been provided to you in the chat box. Thanks to everybody for your kind cooperation huh? and for joining the session. So best of luck for you all for your examination. Have a nice weekend. Thank you, sir.